So back to helpers intersect. Next we have inverts. Inverts basically going to take any boolean and output the opposite. So if it's coming in true, it's going out false. It's coming in false, it's going out true. Um, let's go ahead. We've got node. Node is pretty simple. What it'll do is it'll actually access any uh, max node in the scene. It doesn't have to be geometry. It could be a point helper or a shape even. And we can go ahead and pick that. Then we can get certain information about that node. Uh, whether what its position, spin, what its velocity is, how it's aligned. Um, node can also be dynamically inputted to get passed along from something else. Maybe a picker is part of the TD tool. Okay, that was node. Next up we've got OR. OR is pretty simple. It's another logistics operator, Boolean operator. Um, it's going to say if either of these is true, if either OR is true, then output true. So pretty simple. And we could test for multiple inputs. So if any of these is true, output a true. Uh, next we have 1 to x. 1 to x is interesting because it takes a single integer value input and it's going to output um, according to this input. Let's explain. You can specify the number of outputs. Let's say you had a variable in your scene from uh, 1 to 10 and each particle could memorize his own number and so when that particle comes along he can pass his number into this x output and say okay give me number 3 and then this output number 3 here is going to be the one that's outputted true and that can be branched off and uh, similar to kind of a, a case statement it can be used to activate something else um, you could also generate an, the value coming in uh, based on an expression. You could set up a series of ifs, uh, nested ifs, and output either a 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, for this input, this x output input. And then it'll output the one that, the number that you had inputted. Okay, we also have particle data. Particle data is very useful if you have maybe a memory operator that has a particle in it. Um, let's see here, let's get that up. So if we had a memory operator, we could get some particle, take the particle into here, into the particle data, and then we could output any of this information about that particle. Uh, memory might not be the, the best example of that because now it's very uh, common and possible in TP3 that you can, uh, let's see, not that one, but let's use a, yeah, will the size work? Um, you can use the actual particle output as a, as an input for multiple things now. You can use it as a size, um, position, scale, spin, shape. Um, basically what it allows you to do is Anytime you see a particle output, um, you can use that and pipe it into something and say, okay, well, let's see, let's get a good example. Okay, yeah. Um, not that, but say distance. So if we could take a particle now and pipe it into this position, and what it'll do is it'll say, okay, I'm looking for a position input, but I got a particle. I can just go ahead and look up that particle's position. Um, so you can go ahead and use particles uh, to feed into certain value types, position, rotation scale, etc. And it will look at the particle, figure out which value it is. Uh, the only problem is you got to watch out if there are flexible data types, it might pick the wrong one, so be specific. But we are actually looking at particle data. Particle data might even be more useful if we take a look at the helper called timer, which we're going to get to in a sec, but I'll jump into it now. Timer, um, if you start with a particle, and we'll feed that particle into there, and we'll set up a particle age, this would be a situation where you would be saying, OK, all particles, when they're born, start a timer that's going to run for 30 frames. Okay, so now we've got a timer coming out. Now this timer is outputting uh, different types of information. It's outputting whether or not it's running. It's outputting its current time, so anywhere from 0 to 30. And it's outputting a, 
uh, particle to use. Because what happens is this all particle gets sent into timer and it starts kind of a new subset of time where it's going to keep track of the particle itself uh, and that's why you have this particle output. So if you need to actually ac access this particle now who is being fed into here, uh, you're going to want to use this particle. Do not try to connect this way across. Uh, it will not keep that connection. Uh, if you need information about the particle who is in the middle of a timer, use the particle output there. So if you wanted to find out, say, the, the position of that particle who's in the timer, you could use this particle data helper this way and connect them and get this position or any other piece of information. Okay, that was particle data. Next we have point three. Point three is just kind of the basic um, unit we can use to create a vector, um, or we can modify vectors j in the same way that we've done with the float and frame, etc. Um, we can input a vector here and maybe take a particle's velocity and say, okay, let's get that again. Whatever your velocity is, I want to add more to the z and then I want to set your, I want to set and update your velocity. So we're, in this case we're actually going to use a standard operator. This is uh, particle data, very different than the particle data helper which is going to tell you information about a particle. Particle data operator is going to allow you to set information. That's why it's got a bunch of inputs and no outputs. So in this case we're saying okay all particles get their current velocity, add some to the z and then set their velocity as the new velocity. Uh, point three, that will also work on a per second basis, so it's going to divide this over time, over whatever your frame rate is, uh, as well as you can multiply the current value by that. Or you could add negative. So. Let's see, point three, next up we've got random. Uh, random, of course, will generate random numbers between value 1 and value 2, and a unique seed used to calculate that value. It can output new values per call. Um, you don't necessarily have to have particle input connected, but if you want each particle to generate his own unique uh, random number, you are going to want that particle in. Uh, we were thinking of a case for this uh, particle call. New value per call, you could have a setup where maybe you had uh, different rates. Let's actually do this. And in this case, being set to new value per call, he's being called three times. So he's going to go ahead and send each one of these position borns a new unique number. Um, if he is set to per frame, then he's only going to output one new unique value every frame. And of course animation would be the whole timeline, so one unique value per timeline. Uh, the way this works when you have particles connected is this is saying uh, all particles, I want to generate a random number for them every time sample. Generate a new value. And this will generate a unique value per particle per time sample. Uh, if we also, which is pretty much the same as frame iteration. Frame iteration and call, uh, when you have particles selected, inputted here, uh, pretty much operates the same. It's every frame or every time sample, remember time samples here on the master dynamic, um, every time sample generate a new random value for them, or every frame. Uh, if it's set to animation, and you had the particle connected, what it'll do is it'll create a new unique value for each particle. Each particle gets its own unique number, but only once through the whole animation. Um, so maybe you want to set up uh, characteristics for the particle and determine their age or something, or set their age to automatically be something. You could set this to animation at birth and um, set that value. Or if you want them to keep track of a certain value only once and kind of keep one thing in mind. Like if he has a preference for something, um, you would use an animation, generate that value, store it somehow either in a memory operator or data channel, and then he could uh, he could later use that unique random value he had memorized. <laughs>